tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā tato katoa. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, academic staff, graduates, proud families, and friends. It is a great honour, a humbling honour, to have been awarded the honor, honorary degree of Doctor of Music, and also terrifying as it is to be asked to give this year's graduation address. Um, to the graduates first, congratulations and well done. You have toiled and achieved and you are rightly to be congratulated. To the teachers, the professors, lecturers, tutors, who guided you through your studies, and we are all very grateful to you and your efforts. To the families who supported you through the years of study, many of you who are here today to celebrate your great achievement, thank you. To my mother, my late father and my wife, all of whom who supported me without fail or question through my studies and thereafter, thank you. I loved my time at, at Vic. Um, for me, it was a time of, of great change and growth. I loved being in the environment of the university amongst great mentors, supportive friends, and alongside all of that, I had a, I had a hell of a time, a blast. Um, I studied with my great, great singing teacher, uh, Miss Emily Meir. Um, em was a huge influence on me. And after I arrived at Vic as a baritone, she convinced me to abandon my, the comfort of the lower range voice and to embrace the challenge of becoming a tenor. Taking the step was a big deal for me and meant leaving behind nearly all of my repertoire and much of my studied technique. It was pretty much starting from scratch. But it was a big change, and with that, Emily and Professor Peter Walls encouraged me to be bold and to try it out. We worked hard during the year, and progress was made. My end of year uh, honors recital started with the bass arias from Handel's Messiah. Oh, it then went on to the <laughs> and then went on slightly up the uh, the, the range to Rossini, uh, Barbara Seville, uh, Largo for Largo for Largo. Anyway, as you see, <clears throat> I was making my way up the range, but most importantly, thanks to Emily and her work with me at Vic, I finished with Puccini's Nessun Dorma. That's the famous Puccini aria uh, that Pavarotti made famous with the words, vincero, 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 I will win. I'm not so sure the performance was quite the triumph uh, that the aria would suggest, but the triumph was giving it a go, facing the fear and doing it anyway, not choosing the, the safe option, but choosing to risk a good mark in my end of year recital um, and just to give it a shot. Stepping into the arena whilst everyone watched, judges, and sometimes criticizes. It must have been okay though, I did come out with my Bachelor of Music with Honours. Uh, an enduring memory I had at that time was trying out some of my new tenorial repertoire in an unconventional setting with my great friend and fellow operatic tenor, Ben Marchese, Benjamino. Uh, we would put our School of Music studies to good use uh, by singing the great operatic masters, Donizetti, Puccini, Bizet, on many a Friday night down on Courtney Place, uh, <clears throat> just a block or so down from the chap who would sing the Kenny Rogers numbers. <laughs> um, to be fair, uh, we were probably motivated uh, more by the lack of of funds for refreshment than the, the desire to hone our performance skills. However, even with Dutch courage, singing on Courtney Place at 10.30 on a chilly August night was a very demanding gig. Uh, it required more than a small amount of bravery. I graduated a tenor because Vic provided a wonderful environment for me to try out something which eventually earned me my international career. I was encouraged to be bold, 
and it was a fantastic philosophy for me and one I have tried to live by long after I left the campus. The path to your success will require that sometimes you need to be bold. Sometimes you need to say yes when no would be far easier. Staying seated is far easier than stepping up. As you leave today with your well-earned qualifications, which you have, have attained through hard labor and tenacity, I encourage you to be the person to step up. Embrace the opportunities that you are presented and be brave. And don't worry what other people will say. They're not the ones in your shoes uh, being called to the task. And try to take the little opportunities you have to step up. I'm positive that one of the reasons I could walk out on stage for the opening night of, uh, with Daniel Barenboim of La Scala in Milan uh, is because I stood up those nights on Friday cold nights all those years ago in front of an extremely boisterous audience. Uh, you just can't beat training like that, let me tell you. <laughs> in thinking about what I was going to say today, I thought of a quote from a speech from 1910 given by President Teddy Roosevelt at the Sorbonne, a speech I often dwell on. Um, it sums up eloquently what I hope to express to you today. And please excuse his reference only to men. It applies completely across the board. It is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions, who spends himself on a, in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I'm sure you guys, as you go forward in your careers, in the range of disciplines we have here uh, this evening, you will all know both defeat and victory. But if you go boldly, at least you cannot be accused of being a timid soul who sat on the benches. Step into the arena, go forth, strive valiantly, vincero. Thanks everyone.